Hello everyone, today I want to talk about a serious issue with junior developers nowadays. If you're a junior developer, relying completely on AI can be like trying to drive an F1 car before you've even learned to ride a normal car. You can make it star and drive for a bit, but you will eventually crash. And yes, I am referencing this to your tech career. In this video, I'm going to break down what mistakes almost every junior dev makes when it comes to using AI, how it can make you unemployable in the future, and how you can actually vibe code the right way. All right, before we dive in, you are watching The Coding Koala, and I try to help tech bros by sharing some valuable stuff that I have learned and experienced. Now, let's quickly talk about what vibe coding actually is. Just kidding, I think we're already past that phase. Let's talk about why vibe coding can be risky for junior developers, what challenges you'll likely face in your career, and how to prepare yourself so you can actually make it work. So firstly, let's bust the biggest myth about vibe coding, that anyone can do it. It's true to some extent, but what after AI generates your code? Do you understand any of that and modify as per your requirements? You've probably seen videos of YouTube devs casually whipping up entire apps in a few hours. But here's the truth. Vibe coding looks effortless because these devs already have years of experience under their belt. They know the ins and outs of coding, debugging, and designing systems. For a junior developer, trying to do the same thing can quickly turn into chaos. Imagine trying to cook a five-course meal when you can barely make scrambled eggs. That's vibe coding for a junior dev. You might get lucky with one or two features, but soon you'll hit bugs, misunderstand architecture, or rely on AI to do things you don't fully understand. And that's why so many beginners get frustrated. The code may run, but it's often messy, hard to maintain, and doesn't teach you the fundamentals you actually need to grow as a developer. So before you jump into the vibe, you need to understand the risks and know whether you're ready to ride this wave or if you should first build a stronger foundation first. All right, let's learn why junior developers struggle with vibe coding. These aren't just random struggles. They're fundamental roadblocks that can make or break your coding career. Number one, lack of foundational knowledge. Vibe coding assumes you already understand the building blocks of programming. Things like algorithms, data structures, and debugging aren't optional. They're your foundation. Without them, you might copy-paste the code that seems to work until it crashes or behaves in ways you don't expect. For example, a junior dev might try to implement a certain feature with AI assistance. The AI gives you code that technically works, but you don't understand why. When a new requirement comes along, you're stuck because you can't modify the code correctly, and suddenly your quick win turns into hours of debugging. Number two, over-reliance on AI or shortcuts. Vibe coding often involves AI tools or pre-built snippets that make things faster. But here's the catch. If you don't understand the logic behind the code, the coding further with it is nightmare. I've seen juniors copy-paste solutions that almost work, only to realize later that a tiny overlooked detail breaks the entire feature. And when that happens, they become frustrated and blame AI for not doing the task. The AI might make coding easier, but it can't replace your understanding. Think of it like using a calculator without learning math. Sure, you get the answer, but you have no idea why it's correct or how to solve a slightly different problem. Number three, difficulty in estimating scope and planning. Experienced developers can vibe code efficiently because they can anticipate what features require, how the system interacts, and where bugs are likely to pop up. Junior devs, on the other hand, often underestimate how complex even simple features are. One small function can have five to 10 hidden dependencies. Since they don't know what each line of code does, they miss those, get tons of error, which they don't really know how to solve. For instance, say you're building a login system. A junior dev might just focus on input fields and a submit button, thinking that's all there is to it. But they don't consider validation, security, error handling, and backend integration. Without planning, vibe coding is just for hobby projects. Finally, number four, psychological aspect, frustration and burnout. Vibe coding can give you a false sense of confidence. You think you're coding efficiently, but when bugs hit or features break, the frustration can hit hard. For juniors, this can lead to burnout or the belief that coding isn't for them, when really, 
It's just that their foundation isn't strong. In short, vibe coding isn't just about letting AI write code. You need experience, intuition, and foresight. Without these, you risk wasting time, getting frustrated, and making yourself dumber. So these are the main challenges that junior developers constantly face when vibe coding. All of these explain why vibe coding isn't for junior developers, at least not yet. But don't worry, there's a point where vibe coding actually works, and that's what we'll explore next. Okay, so I've been kind of tough on vibe coding, but here's the good news. Vibe coding does work, and when you know how to do it right way, it's one of the most fun and productive ways to build software. Number one, experienced developers with strong fundamentals. The first group who really benefit are experienced developers because they already know the fundamentals so well that they can spot when AI-generated code makes sense or when it's about to break everything. For example, a senior dev can ask AI to build an API endpoint, but they'll immediately catch if the response handling is insecure or if error handling is missing. They're not relying blindly. They're using vibe coding as an accelerator, not as a replacement for knowledge. Number two, small to medium features or prototypes. Vibe coding also shines when you're building small features or prototypes. Instead of over-engineering or spending hours planning, you can just flow. For instance, let's say you want to test out a new dashboard feature. A quick session of vibe coding might get you a working prototype in an evening. Later, when the idea proves useful, you can refactor it properly. That's the sweet spot. Fast experimentation without the pressure of shipping production-ready code immediately. Number three, balancing structure with flow. The key difference is this. Experienced developers know when to vibe and when to slow down. They might vibe code a front-end component, but when it comes to database migrations or security logic, they'll take a more structured, careful approach. It's about balance. So knowing when to vibe code and when not to is also important. So vibe coding absolutely works, but it works best when you already have strong fundamentals. If you're a junior dev, don't worry. We'll talk next about how you can upskill yourself so that you can take advantage of AI efficiently. All right, so if you're a junior developer watching this and feeling demotivated, you absolutely can get there. Here are a few practical tips to prepare yourself so vibe coding actually works for you instead of against you. Number one, focus on fundamentals first. Learn your language inside out. Understand basics, logic building, and especially debugging. Vibe coding without this knowledge is like playing a guitar without ever learning chords. You might make noise, but it won't sound like music. Number two, use vibe coding in small projects. Instead of vibe coding your big class project or production feature at work, try it on small side projects. Build a small app, a little game, or a fun utility. That way, if things break, you're not stressed out and you can learn without real consequences. This can actually help you develop debugging and refactoring skills. Number three, don't copy blindly. Analyze the code. If you're using AI or copying snippets, don't just paste them in and move on. Pause. Ask yourself, why does this work? Could I explain this line by line to someone else? That habit alone will level up your learning faster than anything else. So. Don't think of vibe coding completely bad for new devs. Focus on your fundamentals, practice in small, safe ways, and use AI as a tool to enhance your learning, not replace it. And once you've built that foundation, trust me, vibe coding becomes one of the most powerful, fun ways to create and it can 10x your productivity. So here's the bottom line. Vibe coding is an amazing way to get into flow, build fast, and even have fun but it's not the best path for junior developers just starting out. Without strong fundamentals, it can turn into confusion, frustration, and spaghetti code. But with the right foundation, vibe coding becomes a superpower. If you're a junior dev, focus on learning first, experiment safely, and grow your skills step by step. When the time comes, you'll be able to ride that vibe wave with confidence. If this video helped you, hit that like button. It really supports the channel. And if you want more tips on coding smarter and leveling up as a developer, don't forget to subscribe. Also, and drop a comment on what your thoughts on vibe coding. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.